Hello lads and lasses, this is Amazon here. Now right now what we're going to be playing is Final Fantasy Tactics. Now this is the second game I ever played on a console. Ever. And I have to say I fell in love with the game. First game I ever played on a console was Final, not Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star. That was a great game for the Dreamcast. I love what they did with it. They moved it onto Xbox. Uh, they've even got it on Xbox 360. They've got it on the GameCube. And I fell in love with that game. I, I just have to say, I fell in love with that game. Uh, second game I played for the PlayStation 1 was... Uh, no, this was the first game I played for the PlayStation 1. It was Final Fantasy Tactics. And I absolutely love this game. I do. I, I love the combat system. I love the storyline. I love how open it is and what you can do. And I, I think they brought in a lot of what they should have in this game. Now, for the second game I played was... Uh, what was it? Legends of Dragoon. So that was a that was a huge game. It took me months to beat that game. And I'm telling you months. I think it was like a four disc game in total and you had to go about and in that game the I'll see if I can get it on this one. I'll, I'll see if I can get it, but this is very old, so <laughs> we gotta be careful with how much we work it. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics, back to the game. Uh, the combat system is a bit hard to grasp at first, but I really do like it afterwards. Once you get used to it, you're kind of like, alright, alright, I can do this, I can do this. It does take some getting used to, though, I won't lie. For the first level, you're only going to be able to select the character you can right now, and that's you right there in the purple armor. I've just got to move here real quick. Alright, now I've got to act. Uh, got thrusting. Alright, um, a lot of what this game does bring to the table though is a great storyline. I mean the Final Fantasy series has been great for their storyline, right? Am I right? I mean they can't make 14 different games plus a few offhand games without having a great story and having an interesting game experience and not expect people to keep steady, you know? Now, <laughs> They've even got this game for the Game Boy Advance, so if you don't want to go out and get an emulator on your computer, or you just don't bother to go out and get the PlayStation 1, but you do have a uh, Game Boy Advance, you could probably find it. It's actually pretty rare, I've only seen about, I've only had like two friends that have ever had a copy of it, but I, I, I do love the game, and I can't stress how much of a good game this is. The storyline is great, it kind of jumps you into the, to the very beginning right here, this is kind of like in the future. So after this level you're going to jump back in the past and you know you're going to go from there from when you're just a cadet going in the military. Right here you're already out of the military, you're a mercenary now. So it's kind of like we'll show you the ending part or, or close to the end part and then we'll jump back to the storyline. So I, I do like what they got going on there. Now, as for this, it's pretty. It's pretty easy combat system. Uh, you got your basic commands: act, move, wait. As you've seen this al already, uh, you got a few special ones where you can throw stones, and archers can charge their bullets and stuff of that nature. It's it's pretty interesting. It gets pretty in depth at times. I won't lie. And uh, what it really takes into account is a lot of your tactics, your tactical skill. It's it's not like those games that, you know, you go you have a certain point of tactical advantage in this and then the other part's look and then the other part is just action. This is just straight tactical warfare. And I I I love games like this. I, I really do. I don't know why. I just always have. So Let's get in here. Lads shooting arrows now, lad levels up. It doesn't really matter if the enemy levels up, because you're killing them anyway, so... And in the very beginning, you know, your character's going to be all very overpowered. Like, right here, all these characters are strongly overpowered. I do have to warn, though, if you do pick up this game and you do want an archer, do not move a person in front of that archer, because the archer will line of sight the person that is just in front. So you are going to get shot, and it is kind of depressing. As for much else, it kind of brings to account of 
you know, where are you going to move, how are you going to hit them, if you hit them from behind, you've got like a 100% chance of hitting them, you move them from the sides, you know, you basically got those three places you majorly want to hit. If you want to attack a person, you mainly want to hit them from behind, from the left or the right, not generally in the front, because, you know, they have a chance to dodge, a chance to take less damage, you know, but from the front it does work at the same time. Um, let's see, let's move. I've got to go take out that lad. So we're going to turn the camera here. And uh, that's a bad thing too. The camera controls do get a bit clunky. Uh, you have certain parts of the terrain blocking your character. You're not going to be able to see exactly what you're doing. And I think that was a fault. You can zoom out, but at the time I cannot remember the hotkey. I'll probably end up pushing that on buttons while I'm recording this right now. And see if I can find the button to zoom out a tad bit. But has anything right here, you got the stasis, so you got a bunch of skills. Each character's got a job, you know, uh, an archer, a squire, a knight, a monk, uh, black mage, white mage. You know, it's got so many jobs, and the further you go on to the game, the more jobs you get. And with those jobs, every time you level up, you get a job level up. Every time you, you kill an enemy, oh, there it goes, I think it was what, G? Alright. Um, uh, the job. You you got two pre you pretty much got two experience bars, right? One's for your actual level and the other one's for your job level. Now when your job level levels up you get a certain number of JP, which is job points. Now these can be spent on abilities and other things that you can use to make your character stronger, you know, give them a wide array of abilities to use. And then your experience is basically like your base stats, your health, your MP, your C T you know, so on and so forth. And uh, to be honest with you, I really haven't figured out. Excuse me. I really haven't figured out what the CT stands for. Know what it really does. I haven't played this game for years. I, I, I. Last time I played this game was when I was eight, maybe seven. I don't remember. But it was a very long time ago. I can assure you that. Um. Let's see here. That's gonna move, and that's gonna be my turn afterwards. Who do I want to hit? All right, so we'll wait for this last to go. And so, pretty much, I, I I can't stress it enough. You know, this game is all about tactics. You got to be careful where are you going, what unit you're moving where, because not all units are gonna be a tank. You know, knights are your usual tanks. They've usually got a lot of health. They do some pretty decent damage. And then you got your archers. Oh, here's my turn. All right, let's move here. Let's go take out him. We're gonna mosey on down here. Hop down. <coughs> and the interesting one about this game was, uh, you use circle instead of axe. Wait, oh, uh, what? He guarded? Ah, that's another thing about knights. They're pretty good at dodging and guarding and, you know, pretty being careful and not getting hit. I, I do give the knights that, and that's what I usually make my main character as, and that's you. And I went with the basic name uh, of Ramza. Ramza's the basic name for this one right now. And that lad got owned. Now you got your XP and your JP, you know, just like that. You pretty much got two bars to level, you move those up, you, you get levels faster, and, you know, the more enemies you kill, so on and so forth. I do also like what they did with the weapon and armor shop. They didn't make it so you got an armor shop and a weapon shop, you know, separate from a different coin of the map. You go to the shop, you got a, a fitting room, which you can try the best fit, you know, get the best armor and weapons for the character and what he's, what job he has. Or you can go in and buy separate weapons and, you know, armor and stuff of that nature. But I do like the fitting room. You got your items in the shop too. And every time you go to a new town, you get new items, new weapons, like, and so on and so forth. You know, just like any basic game would, you know? And I think it takes into a lot of account. I do like what they've done with the creatures and the different characters. A lot of the characters do have names, a lot of the important ones, and the names are pretty original. You don't see a lot of those same names running around out there. And I do like that. The gold system isn't called gold, it's called gil, and it usually runs about the thousands. It's not like 10 gil for a sword, it's usually like 500 for a sword. You know, the gil, they've got her up there in the thousands. Um, each skill can be bought, you can buy counter attacks and, you know, uh, item skills and 
you know, other attacks that will rise when you're mainly a, a melee DPS fighter or something like that. And you know, they probably could have done something different with that, but uh, I think the main part of this game was to bring and make it really open. You know, bring a lot of the storyline into uh, the account. And here's the storyline right now. Princess is crying, like uh, me, and that lass who's supposed to be guarding the princess is like, Damn! Let's run! So she's got to just walk. <laughs> uh, I'll give the game its dues. It's got decent graphics for the PlayStation 1 games. I know you've got Crash Bandicoot and, you know, other games of that nature that actually have a very solid flow for the PlayStation 1 generation. But uh, I do like the graphics. I do like the combat system, how it's squared. You know, you don't get a lot of those chocobos. Are you kidding me? Who does not love a chocobo? <laughs> Who just doesn't love a chocobo? And that lad that just stole the princess, or kidnapped her rather. Uh, you'll find out who that lad is uh, in the storyline. <clears throat> yeah, I do love the storyline though, it's got it all. It's got romance, betrayal, love, you know, f action. You, you got it all in this game. And uh, it's just whether or not you, depend you want to take the time. Now, it really matters to you. Lass has got to get down on herself. Oh God, help us now. This game really does have a large religion aspect too. So I do like what they've done here. <coughs> they've instituted pretty much everything all around. Now it's got to get around close to ending here. So I'm going to bid you all adieu. Uh, good night, good day. I love you all. And deuces lads and lasses. Have a good day.